So what can we really achieve with this? That's that's another that's another part of this is is what can we really achieve um, from this? What is this? What does this actually mean? Right. Uh, because that's that's what a lot of people are going to going to end up talking about is what what does it mean to really cream decriminalize drugs? What is that going to achieve? Well, first of all, it ends this war on drugs, uh, a war on drugs that is massively racist, that has wasted billions and billions of dollars, that has wrongfully imprisoned hundreds and thousands of people in this country, in this country alone. Um, and and more and more of the world is starting to see how ridiculous this war on drugs really is. Uh, this war on drugs has emboldened racism and it's propped up this prison industrial complex. And a lot and people do get g- give me some shit for and I think they give a lot of people shit for being like, oh, the war on drugs is racist. Oh, get out of here. You know, we're just trying to keep society safe. They did that's a lot of that crap is is thrown out there. Uh the war on drugs is racist and it's provably racist. There was a uh one of Nixon's advisors, his name I believe John Ehrlichman, um, came out in the early nineties. Uh and basically said uh, the war on drugs was specifically built to destabilize black communities uh, and hippie communities, right? So if they associated the hippies with weed, it would delegitimize their uh, their cause, their anti-war cause. Uh, and if we associate heroin with the black community, it means that we can go in and uh, destabilize their communities. We can go in and raid their communities whenever they want. They can't get organized. They can't hold jobs. They can't do this. They can't do that. So we have to make these drugs more illegal and make them sound more dangerous so that we can go after them. So it is racist uh, and ideologically you know, against people that are anti-war. Um, and all of this was said by John Ehrlichman, a member of the Nixon administration in the early 90s to a reporter on tape. Yeah, the Nixon administration really didn't understand tapes. Like they just didn't get that technology. I feel like if if the Nixon administration was around with camera phones, I think Richard Nixon would have a heart attack and explode. But here's the thing is is, you know, on a legislative level on on in terms of electoral politics, which a lot of issues boil down to electoral politics for people, right? Because there is so much pressure put on voting in this country and our elected officials, uh, even though that can be disproved very, <laughs> very easily with how much corruption there is within our election election process in and of itself, um, aside from the bullshit that Donald Trump com- comes out and says, right? Donald, oh, the election is, is rigged. Yeah, it is rigged, but your party is rigging the generals. The Democrats just rigged their primaries. They're not very good at rigging generals. Um, But uh, Joe Biden, everybody looks at it and they're like, oh, he's going to heal the country. He's going to bring everybody together, unite, not divide, you know, that whole that whole bullshit that they throw out there. Well, the reality is that Joe Biden has also supported the war on drugs in fact, a lot of the bills that he has put out have specifically been about supporting this racist war on drugs, have specifically been to put nonviolent uh, drug offenders behind bars for life. You know, that the, he, the, the crime bill of 94, but you don't even have to go. I mean, you can go a little bit further back in his career where he was supporting Nixon's war on drugs and and thought he needed to be more stringent. He wrote a fucking police bill of rights. He is the reason why we have a war on drugs to the level that we have the war on drugs. The other thing is going to be about educating the populace, right? I mentioned that a little earlier uh, in the stream is is educating people about what these drugs do. It's important to know that you you can't just legalize something and be like, that's it. We're good to go. Right. It's the same thing with alcohol. Like you should know what alcohol does to your body. And everybody has that thing, right? When I drink tequila, I want to take my shirt off. When I drink whiskey, I piss in fountains. 
that's just a thing that happened. Like those people know what alcohol does to them. And that's why they stick to the choice of alcohol that they have. Right. My preference is gin because I secretly in my heart, I'm 138 years old. That's why I like gin. So I think it tastes good and I can drink it with ginger beer, which helps my tummy. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but you need to know like that step that's legalizing and decriminalizing it is step one. Step two is educating and having places where people can get educated and can administer some of these more dangerous drugs in a safer setting. Right. With, with a little bit more regulation, with a little bit more understanding. Um, that 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 is something that I think we need. Um, education and public health services are are two things that go in tandem for step two, right? Lenny Bruce, uh, famous comedian Lenny Bruce. If you don't know who Lenny Bruce is, uh, you need to go check out Lenny Bruce. You're you're probably gonna have to have a a, a 60s dictionary because <laughs> because he because there's a lot of lingo in in Lenny Bruce's show. But uh, Lenny Bruce once said that uh, doing heroin is like kissing God. Uh, and that's a lot of pressure for me. You know, like if, if there's any reason not like if you were on the fence about doing heroin, I think that phrase should make you not do heroin because, uh, look, I've kissed people uh, before. You know, I've kissed over 30 men and some women as well. Uh, but and I. Like, that's enough pressure of, like, am I doing it right? Is it too much lip? Is it too much tongue? Like, I feel like God is being that God has been around for, like, an eternity has probably kissed, like, a lot of people. And I'd be more concerned about, like, what if I'm not measuring up to God? You know, like, I might, what if I'm, what if I'm using too much tongue with God? What is the right amount of tongue to use with God? I don't know. And that's too much pressure. I'm already an anxious person. I don't need that level of anxiety to be thrown at me. Uh, Lenny Bruce also said that he had to take a bath, a nice hot bath before he would have to take a shit because heroin will constipate you. It it uses up the water in your body. That's that is uh, that is a thing that it does. Right. Uh, and I don't know about you guys, but I am I am not that dedicated to shitting. Like I'll shit when I need to to shit, but I I'm not like let's take a bath, and and make it an event, kind of dedicated to pooping. That's just not my cup of tea. It might be some people's, it's just not mine, right? But again, these are this is all information that you should know. So this is all stuff like you could introduce this into the Dare program, right? And and you could talk to teenagers about like hey. Yes, this drug will make you feel like you're kissing God, but it also means that you have to take a bath to shit sometimes. Also, your veins get all fucked up. You know, like you get track marks. The withdrawal symptoms are intense. Let's watch this clip from Train Spotting. You should know what the drug is, what the positives are, and what the negatives are. Those are all important factors to consider. And you should have a controlled area where I think you can administer the drugs with the with the professional, right? To know how to use the drug properly. That will that will help because it will it'll instill in people that there is a level of responsibility to these drugs. Right? Like that 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 Yes, there is a there is a danger that you can overdose, that you can hurt yourself doing something like this. That's that's the that's important in this <laughs> situation. You should know what these drugs do. You should have a safe place that you can do them because all all in all, that's going to reduce crime, that's going to reduce overdoses, that's going to reduce people hurt like, people going into hospitals with drug-related injuries, drug-related health problems, right? If you're it, We do that with alcohol, right? Uh, if if a bartender sees that you are visibly too drunk, they Legally, they're allowed. They're supposed to stop serving you drinks, but you know the entire bar will get behind that and be like, "Babe, you've had a little too much to drink. Maybe we should call you a cab 
and you know one of your friends will make sure that you get home safe and sleep on your side so you don't throw up in your throat or whatever you know like there are we we do that for for drinking if someone is smoking too much there are ways to say hey let's let's have you quit you know you can use a patch you can chew some gum you can I don't know what uh, is are there uh, replacement behaviors? Uh, yeah, I think there's like chew a toothpick or something. Uh, there's there's replacement behaviors that you can use. This is the same thing. It's if if and Portugal's doing the same thing too by having people go, oh, you're 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 doing heroin. Why don't we have people that bring you a specific dose every day so you can you can function? We're not forcing you to to quit or anything, but we're worried about you and we don't want you to overdose. We understand that you need this thing. You know. The other thing this would mean is governmental transformation. This means that you actually have a government that is not run by corporate interests, right? It would it would mean that you would have to completely transform this government. Because in, in order for a system like this to work and for you to get accurate results out of it, you can't have a government that has a program within itself to benefit the people that it actively fucks over. You can't, that, that just doesn't make any sense. Then, then it is a government that's setting up a program that's meant to help people. It's setting it up to fail. That's not, I mean, what, what government would want to do that? Oh, is it one that it would be run by unfettered capitalism and corporatism, like the one that we have now? Oh, so that means that instating a program like this would instill some kind of responsibility within the government. To say that if you underfund a program that, that helps heroin addicts get a, the dose of heroin and, and get the clean supplies that they need, if you underfund it and they can't give them that, you're basically giving, handing them over to drug traffickers. You're basically handing them over to sharing needles again and, you know, spreading HIV and other contracted diseases that they can get through that. They have to put the maximum effort behind this, behind a program like this. And I feel like Deadpool would be the best one to put the maximum effort behind a program like this. Not just because it involves drugs, but because he is the master of maximum effort. That is a, a very specific nerd joke. <laughs> so what I mean, so what, what would this program need is proper funding. It would need um, proper staffing, uh, proper staffing, sorry. And uh, we would need to consistently try it for a minimum of a decade. For 10 years, we would have to try it consistently with the appropriate amount of funding that it needs, with the appropriate amount of staffing that it needs for a decade to actually get accurate results out of it. So it means that if you, if you decriminalize drugs in this country and then a month later they're like, oh, well, you still got drug people with the drugs everywhere. I, I saw a man putting a, 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 a needle in his eyeball. And it's like, were you at a sideshow perhaps was that part of an event did you pay a cover to see this person put a needle in his eye senator but if the results aren't going to be immediate because i don't some, something like this this is this is sort of the difference right uh, like i do believe that this is a progressive idea but there is an incremental way that progressivism takes hold does this make this is kind of philosophy make sense that the idea in and of itself, implementing the idea in and of itself is progressive, and then letting it play itself out is an incremental process. It's going to be the same thing with like universal health care. Right? Like, it's going to take a little while for economics to, to grab hold of it. And you see a positive benefit, maybe two years, something along those lines. But when you're when you're making a transition, it's like moving, right? Like when you move into a new house, it's not like your shit gets all set up. It's not like you get settled in immediately. <laughs> you know, it takes a little bit of process. You unload the kitchen first, or you maybe you set up your bedroom first. It takes a little while to get that process done. So we need to give it the time that it's going to need to to take to to actually make this process work 
That means you're going to have to transform the government and actually make it about a government that thinks about people first and not profits. I would also say leave religion out of it. <clears throat> uh, my biggest wager is that I bet Jesus did smoke weed. Uh, I bet there was weed uh, in the Middle East somewhere, and I believe that Jesus did smoke weed. He was he was pretty chill uh, until it came to um, to the damn bankers. It, uh, the banker showed up, uh, and he was like, "I'm gonna punch them all in the dick," uh, and then he did. And then he did, you guys. Uh, but I think when it comes to hard drugs, I feel like Jesus might not know what's up because I very, very much think that I don't think there was a lot of cocaine and heroin going around in biblical times. I don't even think like needles were invented in biblical times for them. Like, how what would you would they eat the heroin? Like, what would you do? And look, America isn't isn't great and it's not back, right? Especially when there's so much fucking work to do. Just this one idea alone, there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of levels where there there would be uh some kind of transformation. Right? Drugs drugs will make you realize how little you need unfettered capitalism. <laughs> and it makes you realize how stupid nationalism really is. <laughs> you know, like like the only thing that your country has all the answers and is the best. Like, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure when you do a bunch of drugs, you're like most of that is is bullshit. That and that's part of the reason why they don't want to legalize drugs is because they want you to think that one country is better than the other. So it keeps dividing people. Hold on. My cat needs to be let in. <laughs> Sorry, we've accidentally trained our cat to meow at the door to let us in. So let him in. So uh, that's that's what I did. I'm pretty sure he's going to feel real weird about the fact that there's a mic stand here now. But look, nationalism, you like you can't run a country on a personality disorder. And nationalism is that right. Nationalism is basically countrywide narcissism. To think that a nation is better than the other, it's like nationwide narcissism. You can't run a country on a personality disorder and, and say that it's working properly because it's not. Then you have the media. I, I want to show you guys an article from the New York Times uh, and one particular part of this article trying to debase what's going on um, You know, with... Uh, with this program in Portugal, uh, and it's it's quite. I I think it's pretty funny. Let me find it. Where is it? Jeez, I have way too many tabs open. Sorry for the delay, you guys. I just saw it. Aha, there it is. Okay, so it's a New York Times article, and uh, so they start by saying not everything got better immediately after Portugal ships once. A uh, study found that an increase in drug experimentation after the law, but this was a transient effect. Most experimentation did not use to regular drug use, and in a lot of cases, that's probably true, right? Like they, like people don't, people aren't like automatically jumping into doing the drugs that they try. Fuck, I, there's there's alcoholic drinks that I'll try for the sake of trying, but I don't make it my regular alcoholic drink, right? And how many people just casually have a cigarette here and there, you know? Uh, so this is this next paragraph is the one that uh, that trips me up the most, right? It says murders increased by forty one percent in five years after the drug reform law, after which they fell, and drug trafficking grew. These could be related. <laughs> could be. You have no hard evidence saying it, but you're just going to report about it anyway. You're like, hey, we found this thing that has nothing to do with the thing, the the actual topic that we're talking about, but we're going to throw it in there anyway, just just for fun, just for shitsies and gigglesies. And then we're going to let you know that none of this has anything to do with it. This could be related. And then they also were just like in in five years, the murder rates grew, but then they were just gone. They like all tapered out. Yeah. Do you think it's because in five years, enough people started smoking weed to chill the fuck out and stop killing each other? 
Like they just did a bunch of chill out drugs and they were like, you know what? I don't need to kill people over this. <laughs> Maybe I'll decrease the amount of murder there is. I don't know, but there couldn't be anything relating to that. It could be related. It could not be related. I don't really know. Like you're... <laughs> These guys are supposed to be this national journalistic, uh, like this big time fucking journalistic newspaper that, you know, award winning New York Times and, and something prestigious. And they just go, maybe it's related. I don't really know. But sometimes murders go up. It could be because of drugs. I don't really know. There's nothing co corroborating my fact. There's nothing saying no, but there's nothing saying yes. So I'm just going to throw it in there. What do you think? You're probably saying yes, right? Because we kind of framed it that way. <laughs> anything to do with a positive spin on drugs like neoliberal newspapers like this are just going to be like but let's not forget that sometimes murders go up and it could be because of the drug use we should probably just stick to the pharmaceuticals and booze <laughs> just get drunk everybody i just kind of thought that was funny and this is so uh, successful that uh, norway actually started doing it too uh, Norway has a, a similar program, not to the, I, I don't think it's to the extent that Portugal is, is decriminalizing its drugs and, and with the centers and the mobile methadone clinics and all that. But I mean, you know, it, you, you, ca you can't ignore it at this point. It's been, it's been 19 years and their, their OD rates, their drug use rates, their addiction rates are all going down. You know, people are are not relapsing as much anymore because, you know, if if they need to go and use drugs again, there is a place where they can get it controlled and they can go back and get help again. You know, like they're not dying somewhere. They're not, you know, trying to steal money from their parents to go. They're not breaking into cars. They're not committing other crimes to go get their drugs. Because they know that there's a place to do it. They know that prison is not an, an option for them. Treatment is. And knowing that they can get treatment, they actually go and fucking get it. Holy shit. The other thing is, like, I think legalization um, would would lead to less trafficking. I don't know if you could completely get rid of the illegality of drugs and by which I mean like people selling it illegally outside specific means. Right. So I think even if you legalize drugs completely, there is going to be a, a, a particular percentage and I don't know what percentage it would be, but I, I do think that there is somebody that's going to try to take advantage and circumvent the system to, to, you know, get, and, and it becomes then a social responsibility of how do you, how do you let people, you know, know that there is a safer way to do it. And, and, say like hey don't go to you know this side of it or whatever but i don't think you're going to get rid of like drug trafficking altogether i will say that you will significantly reduce it especially by the improvements that i mentioned earlier right the the education programs the public health programs transforming a government to think about its people first and not profits first to to you know push away nationalism and actually start listening to other countries with other creative ideas um, on how to deal with the issues like drug addiction, on how to deal with issues uh, like drug trafficking and things of that sort. I think it would significantly reduce it. I mean, look look at Colorado in and of itself. They're, they they reduce drug trafficking. Again, it's not all gone. I'm sure there is some, but but it has reduced it to a level where you know people aren't dying from it all the time. And I, 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 again, I want to go back to the alcohol and, and cigarette thing, right? I know so many people that have a casual drink and a casual smoke. If you completely legalize drugs and implement all of the, the, the things that I just talked about, what comes with it, right? What are the consequences of, of legalizing drugs? What are the, what are the next steps that come through with the, with all of this stuff, right? It becomes like a casual drink. It becomes like a casual cigarette. You know, you can go to a place where you know a joint is is on the menu and you grab one of those or you can go outside on a patio and sit there with a cigarette and or uh, sorry a cup of coffee and and you know have a joint or have you know any other drug that you want have a spe spe specific place for it and it's not something of shame it's not something that people are 
going to get mad at you for, you know, it's something that you do. It's responsible. There's a responsible amount. There's a limit on how you can give, give it to people. Again, it becomes like it, 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 it is possible to have it regulated. It's a matter of whether or not a society and a government is going to choose to regulate that. Um, so that, that is important. Uh, I'm going to look at your comments. Uh, Sandy, I am on Rockfin. I'm actually live streaming this uh, on Rockfin as well. Uh, so if you're if you're on the old Rockfins, you can go you can go check out the the stream there. Uh, it's it's going to be a couple minutes behind. I will say that it is going to be a couple minutes behind. It's usually the last one to get caught up, um, and that's because I'm using Streamyard instead of a direct OBS. Uh, Jay Jackson, hi Jay. Uh, how much time do you use when kissing God? You always ask the hard hitting questions. I do. That's that's my that's that's what I build my comedy around. Hard hitting questions like how much tongue do you use when you kiss God? Uh, you know, I don't I don't know. I'm I haven't talked to God enough to 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 I, I haven't gotten that personal with God. You know, we've had a pretty okay distant relationship. Every so often I show up and I'm like, what's up? How you doing? You you do how's the family? Is family okay? We good? We good? All right. I'm I'm gonna I'm, I don't know what to say here. I feel like I'm doing all the talking. So uh i'm gonna leave re deadpool it's funny that you made that joke since i actually have a similar joke in the office today on an unrelated issue <laughs> i feel like I, le I do love the like the maximum effort idea is just i i love i would love to see deadpool give like a stump speech or you know fucking filibuster in the middle of con con congress talking about maximum effort to <laughs> you know legalize drugs uh i do find that image um <laughs> pretty funny <laughs> hey what's up everybody thank you guys so much for checking out this video if you enjoyed the content in this video make sure you like subscribe and share my content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to 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 address here so make sure you like share and subscribe uh sign up for my email list uh, and that way you'll get weekly uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.